Welcome to the Legends of Master Show, everyone. I'm your host, Tom Wheeler, and I'm very excited to introduce our guest today. She is a very talented actress, writer, and director. Welcome to the show, Alex Angelis. Hello. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Super excited to talk with you. Uh, a lot to talk about because you've been busy in many platforms. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and I, I also I, I'd like to start the show sort of like with everybody's origin story or your background. Um, so you're you're originally uh, from Florida, uh, Gainesville, Florida, correct? Yes, that's that's correct. I grew up on a, a farm with horses and cows, um, which was like a dream. I I had a great childhood, <laughs> um, but it was very remote, and uh, I guess I had a lot of time to like play pretend and. <laughs> okay. You know. <laughs> it, all, it all adds up to it. Speaking of back in the day, uh, <laughs> here's you with your dad. Uh, you have a twin sister and who does music. You guys do music together as well. Um, can you go into that? Like, was that always a part of like your being, so to speak, growing up with music? Yeah. Um, I don't know where it start. I guess. So, like I said, the farm was pretty remote and um, it was like kind of like a great little commune family village. My grandparents were there and, and we didn't have cable. Cable didn't come out that far. So oh. we watched like my grandparents' collection of Rodgers and Hammerstein musicals. It was like on VHS, like that was all we had <laughs> <laughs> as like entertainment. Yeah. So we just danced around to that and, and then, you know, started singing together. And Chris is really the musician. I'm, I'm her backup singer. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's the artist. Okay. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And I, and I also edit in, you know, different footage and stuff. Cause there's uh, some videos on online. People should check out like your performances and obviously her, her music on iTunes and things like that. Uh, very, very, uh, uh, I don't know, just very well written music, uh, very heartfelt, uh, puts you in, in, in that mood. And, and the other thing I thought was interesting is you guys were uh, in sisters, Mary's angel and uh, this as well. Um, you guys be the judge on who's who here. So, <laughs> uh, what was that like, you know, going, uh, you know, acting with her and, and going to that side of things? Yeah, that was cool because, um, you know, going onto a set always is, you know, just everybody's new. Well, usually, yeah. and you just have to become a team like right away. And so it was very cool to have, you know, my partner <laughs> yeah. uh, with me and, and acting, opposite her was really fun um and being that was i think our first thing together um we've done a couple other little things here and there um but yeah i mean it's wonderful to to make art with your friends let alone family so amazing amazing um and that was another aspect like has acting always been drawn you've been drawn to that or when did that actually become a, a thing for you um, I guess, uh, it really became a thing when we moved to, to California. Um, it was like total culture shock, not only because Florida and California are different, but yeah. because we moved from, you know, a remote farm to like a, a town and, um, uh, my parents were like, let's get them out of their shell. Cause we were very shy, you okay. know, kind of just with each other, <laughs> creepy twins, you know, and, yeah. um, <laughs> And so they put us in this theater camp and, okay. uh, and that was like it, you know, we're like, Oh my God, the lights, yeah. <laughs> it's a dancing. And, um, and that, that was it, uh, when we were about 11 and, uh, okay. actually I met my husband there. Really? <laughs> that, yeah. <Man>. That <laughs> I think it worked all around. Right. I mean, look yeah. at me, you guys both are on, uh, uh, so to speak something sharing the same stage, but different stages, right? You got at the acting side, you got the musician side and, you know, a husband out there. That was a pretty. <laughs> yeah. And you know, what else is cool about, um, like we, we decided to, or it sort of happened organically that we yeah. went separate paths in the entertainment arena, um, which was good because we wouldn't have to compete like directly, but yeah. we can support each other. And one of the, coolest things about Chris being a singer, songwriter, and I get to sing with her, but but also uh, have directed her music videos, which is like wonderful because like, as you said, her songs are really emotional and 
you know, yeah. have text and, and they are inspiring to me. So um, that's very cool as well. That's amazing. And, and I have to ask, you know, you, I mean, being identical twins, there had to be at least a couple of occurrences through your lifetime where you guys swapped and played a little trick. On, any interesting anecdotes with that? Um, it doesn't <laughs> happen as much as you would think. <laughs> In fact, that you can talk about, yeah. <laughs> um, I, there was one instance where I set her on a date for me. Oh. Oh, no. Which I like, I feel bad about it. I mean, it's like, oh yeah, you just set her on a date, you're twins, you, that's the benefit. But like, I don't know, it felt sort of shitty. <laughs> um, that's great, that's great. I that's didn't great. unfortunately like want to go to the date. Um, I had, you know, just said yes. And then this other guy asked me out and, and I was like, I'd rather go with him. And, and oh, Chris was already gonna be at the event that we were going to, it was a concert. So okay. just pretend to be me. <laughs> I wasn't actually serious, but she did. That's awesome. Uh, but that's, I feel ashamed. <laughs> that's that's awesome. That's great. That's great. And the other guy, none the wiser, right? I mean, come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, it, that was the other thing. I, I just love uh, what I love about interviewing people is just seeing their journey from you know A to Z, so to speak. Uh, and, and you know, a thing that you got into, uh, you you went to school for acting at, at mm -hmm. NYU uh, Tisch School of Arts and. And even uh, specifically uh, this right here, Experimental Theater Wing. Yeah. Uh, can you go into that experience? Because it's, uh, I mean, not only is it an amazing school, even my oldest daughter's getting into acting. She looked in that school and there's so much amazing things there. Can you go into that and that that side of uh, your education? Of course. Um, yes. I So during my high school years, I went to this conservatory in Carmel. Um, and uh, the teacher, John Farmanesh, was was a um, an alumni of the experimental theater wing at NYU. And so I got a taste of like that kind of uh, training. And then when I was going to college, I was like, this is exactly what I want to do. And what's so cool about their program is that they take from all sorts of uh, approaches of acting and, and sort of say, whatever works for you, which I think is so wonderful. Yeah. Um, because it is so personal and it's whatever, you know, can create an opening in your vulnerability. Yeah. And, um, and I've made lifelong friends. It was like such a wonderful experience, not only to be uh, at that particular program, but in New York City. And um, yeah, I wouldn't trade it. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Amazing. I want to ask that part too, because you kind of led into that a little bit. It, it just fascinates me with that side of acting in particular. Because I mean, let's say it's an emotional scene, whether it's sad or angry or whatever. Um, you know, digging deep into that, I'm, I'm sure everybody's got their own little method of getting into that. Uh, I want to see, you know, when you got you, cause you, you can probably be like, okay, I gotta be sad here. And I'm thinking sad memories or something, and it's not coming across. It's not communicating with the audience or, or the acting class, uh, uh teacher or whatnot. When did you really like, okay, no, I got this. I, I, I'm actually tapping into something real here. What, what was that like for you? Well, it sort of it happens over and over again. Like yeah. every project, every character is different. And it's it's something different for each one, I think. Um, Got you. you know, like I said, it, I have this great toolbox of things that I've learned, but it's like gonna take a different tool for a different character or a different story. And sometimes it's, yeah, like you said, said uh, uh, substituting a memory yeah, or <laughs> listening to a song, or just connecting with my scene partner. Sometimes the the chemistry okay. between actors is is just the thing. So yeah, it's just being open to whatever's working in the moment. Interesting, yeah, and, and like how you worded that, like the toolbox, you know, that toolbox mm -hmm. you tap into for that, uh, and it kind of uh, helps us usher into this subject right here. This is where I actually first heard about you, and as the cleansing hour, which. By the way, phenomenal job. I mean, instant uh, classic performance, instant classic film. Uh, Q, how, how did you uh, even get involved in this? And when you first read the script, I mean, what was your what were your first thoughts? Yeah, I, I got involved very traditionally. I auditioned. Um, oh. Actually, it was a self tape, and oh. uh, followed by a, an in person callback. But um, apparently, 
Damien, <laughs> the director, he yeah. saw, yes, there he is. Uh, <laughs> he looked at a lot of tapes. It was a very like open call because it was kind of a specific character and he just connected with what I did. Um, and yeah, sure. my experience on, on my end of it was um, my husband and I were doing self tape and, and we kind of watched it back, you know, and I shivered. <laughs> And we were like, oh, send that one. <laughs> yeah. That's so, the one. <laughs> I was the creepiest. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I was the creepiest. That's how I won out. <laughs> yeah. But but that too, um, getting into that character, mm -hmm. not only for the audition, but for the, the preparation for the performance was so much based in my training from ETW because a it's, it has a very strong um, physical base. Yeah. So the, the concept that you're, as an actor, you're not just expressing from your face. Yeah. <laughs> your whole body is involved. And so that translated really well into this character because I had to, you know, completely transform physicality between the character of Lane and, and the demon. Two. Yeah. And we, we worked a lot about that, um, on that and Damien gave me some really like cool imagery to sort of oh, cool. play with. And, and that was a great collaboration. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. And that's another thing I want to ask you, because guys, you got to see this film. Uh, it, you, you go from like this sweet girl next door and this total shift to this yeah. demonic, you know, force of nature, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what was that? process because there's some scenes where you literally swing back and forth from from a normal girl next door to this yeah. <laughs> um that yeah it what was that like for you uh process wise shifting back and forth that extremes it's just so much fun like when i read that in the script that particular scene i was like oh oh yeah um because it's just like a roller coaster you know yeah yeah um and it's just I don't know if you do this, but I have arguments with my my own demons, you yeah, know? Yeah. It was just a uh, a louder manifestation of that. Yeah. <laughs> like you're you're arguing with yourself. Um and it's just like every, each each character has their extremely strong opinions and you, you know it's pulling back and forth. Um yeah, yeah it's just a ride. Just, just right back and forth. And and did you, by any chance, I mean, obviously, the, you know, there's a script and there's the direction and the imagery going into this. Did you have any, uh, did you ever see any, like, uh, research-wise, like, looking at some, maybe the movie The Exorcist or even real-life exorcisms, which are always crazy. Uh, did you see anything like that leading into it? Um, well, I have seen a few things. Like, I've definitely seen The Exorcist mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> through, through my hands. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> um, honestly, I'm not like a big fan of the horror genre. Yeah, uh, I have been exposed a lot more since being in this world to it, and and I've come to appreciate yeah. it. But um, but Damien actually requested that I don't do oh, any like research into kind of inspiration or you know other uh, takes on it. Uh, cause he just really liked what I had kind of come up with yeah. actually. And he was like, please don't, please just don't touch it. <laughs> like, okay. I like I mean, that too. It's its own thing. It's uh, at yeah, no point in the film, do you feel like, oh, this is a little hat nod to this or that. It was, it was definitely in its own right, so to speak. That That's amazing direction right there. Yeah. It's just so sometimes don't do anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> let, let it alone. <laughs> yeah. And, and, I mean, but there were some practical things on there, of course. I mean, uh, the makeup. I mean, how long did it take to do makeup and how much did that makeup help you and the other actors on the scene, like, get in the scene even more? Um, the makeup was significant. Uh, it took, like, two to three hours every day um, in the chair, yeah. And it affected things a lot, um, <laughs> mostly for my, my scene partners because I, you know, I can't see yeah. <laughs> Except yeah. for the the um, contacts, they yeah. were a trip because they, 
I couldn't really see that well out of them. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so it was a little disorienting and I kind of had to get my bearings, which made it like even more, because one of the things about uh, the, the physicality and the experience of being the demon was that the demon is in another body, so it's uncomfortable. So there's this tension, there's this like strain and tension the whole time. Um, but the wow. thing about having to be in the chair for so long was um, that they did block shooting um, which oh. means they often would do the other side of the scene, like uh, Kyle Gallner's side of a scene, like facing yeah. his direction while I wasn't there, which oh, is a te testament to how talented he is. Yeah. That he, he did his performance alone. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then once I was out of the chair, I would come and do my half and of course he was there giving me everything because he's a champ and like would wow. never abandon me. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but then he would come to me and be like, Oh my God, if I had known that you were going to look like that and do that, I would have done yeah. something else. But uh, you know, <laughs> he is so great. And, and Damien's such a great editor. It like all became movie magic. Amazing. Yeah. It, everything blends so well. Um, and that, that was the other thing too. Like, you know, things happening on set, like these types of movies have a history of like crazy things happening on set. Uh, we met, I mentioned exorcist earlier. Like there was a lot of craziness with that one. Uh, were there any, like whether a stunt, cause you did a, some stunts yourself as well. And there's obviously other stunt performers involved. Were there any like super crazy on the edge things that maybe audiences don't know about that happened? Um, okay. So the one thing that uh, happened is early on when uh, I get possessed, um, it's like right at the beginning when uh, Father Max is like whispering in my ear and then I headbutt him, you know? Yeah. Um, we like arrange that perfectly. And then I don't know what happened, but I like actually headbutted him. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, no. I don't oh. know how, but oh, anyway, man. needless to say, we use that take. And yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> we Poor, poor Ryan and yeah. I both had it bruises on our heads, but it looks great. So. <laughs> Keep that in, in the, put it in the actual film here. That'd be perfect. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. And it was such a physically demanding uh, role for you. I mean, cause you, like you said, I love how you wait to wear that uh, inside the actor's mind right there of like, it's, it's a demon in, in another body and another skin. Like it's not gonna be comfortable yeah. enough. The twist turning, like there's meaning there's more meaning to it than just trying to look creepy. It looks mm -hmm. creepy because it's deeper now. I love that. Um, you know, for you, like, was that just a, like long days for you? Uh, you feeling sore for a couple of days afterwards? Like, mm -hmm. how did you, how did you, how did you fare through the whole deal? How did that work out for you? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't the most comfortable experience <laughs> physically, but it was uh, totally um, balmed by. Is that a word? Let's just call it a word. Um, Let's call it a word. Uh, <laughs> Mollified, yeah. uh, sure. by uh, balanced by the care and um, you know love that I felt from everybody on set. You know, the, yeah. it's so wonderful how little uh, goes such a long way in terms of just consideration. <laughs> everybody, yeah. you know, asking if I'm all right, and um, but yeah, I mean, being strapped to that chair was. It, and and being an expressive person was was a challenge. Um, yeah. And one <laughs> one day, uh -oh. I um, it was a particularly like I think it was the day of that scene with the back and forth. Um, okay. I I was being wiped down at the end of the day, you know, yeah. <laughs> all the blood and cuts yeah. and um, and like the paint that they use and everything and like head to toe and and the makeup artist was like scrubbing on my legs I was like why isn't this coming off it's like these purple bruises like all oh really legs oh, and man. and then she's like these are real <laughs> oh like, man what did I do to myself because it's not it's nobody but me that's I was just crazy like banging them around and it didn't hurt at the time that's so wild yeah you're, you're going fully method let's just put it let's just put it that way <laughs> um, you know, and that, that's the other interesting, uh, cause what I love is the power 
this is the way I, I kind of almost worried myself, the power of short film. Cause this was a short film uh, yeah. originally. Um, and, you know, taking it from that to this, you know, obviously you're in the middle and you're acting and things like that. Um, you know, what, what was that like as far as, you know, obviously going through it, seeing the final product and just like, I mean, were you shocked? Were you like surprised, uh, you know, what, or just taken back by certain things? What, what was that like for you? Um, well, I, I only watched the, the short. I was, it was mm. a different actress, but you probably knew that. Um, yeah. Just to clarify for the yeah. audience. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so watching the short was like, it gave me such a, a glimpse into what was in Damien's head. And okay. I was extremely useful. Um, and then it just like broadened the 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 story of the relationships between friends and everything. So, yeah, I mean, I wasn't surprised. I think that Damien's vision was really clear, and it was so uh, reassuring to work with him as a director because of that. Awesome. Um, you know, because yeah, like especially with things like this, you don't necessarily know what it's going to translate to. Yeah, like, right. is this gonna work? Is this gonna be like over the top? And is this gonna read? And and he was just, I trusted him implicitly. Um, not only because he was extremely uh, communicative and, and we had like a great rapport of vocabulary on set, but he also is an editor. So inherently in okay. his directing, he knows exactly what he needs. Amazing. And there was okay. no like, extra fluff there was no like i mean every so often of course like let's try something or like uh, to give it a little flavor but but it was like this is what we need and trust me that's we we got it yeah, you know? yeah. i just trusted him so much that's me and it was the movie was an amazing blend of i mean the story is awesome uh i, I love how fresh it is it's like a um like who wouldn't watch that as an online show right i mean yeah. <laughs> I, I actually I loved uh, every take of it and and the blend of the practical and and special effects as well. I mean, and, and pyro. I mean, isn't there some crazy? There's a crazy story of pyrotechnics. Uh, uh, wait, wait, there's it was a stunt performer. Yeah. Um, Keep going to that. It sounded nuts. Uh, well, so um, spoiler. Uh, it's not a spoiler, but um, the part where demon like lights on fire that is is uh not practical the the body suit the burned suit is practical but the flames aren't <laughs> gotcha gotcha yeah um, that would have been cool yeah but right. uh, a little dangerous yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so actually the actor who played that character is in the suit doing that it wasn't a stunt performer um um and that but that the coolest part i think about that scene was the slime, uh, like burned skin. <laughs> yeah. Because <that. laughs> okay, Adam Doherty was a point person for all the special effects, makeup, and and um, all of that. And yeah. uh, he just did a, an amazing job. Oh, he does, his, amazing! Yeah, he's creature kid on Instagram. You should check it out. <laughs> he does all sorts of like. Oh, for sure. Awesome stuff. <laughs> you know, and there's definite uh, vibes in this film. Uh, literally playing with fire. They're kind of tempting the evil forces and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, you know, what, what would you say, um, you know, as far as playing this character, what was your favorite part? Was it the, the juxtaposition of going extremes or uh, just being able to go evil for it? I know a lot of actors like the freedom of that. What was your favorite part of playing that, that character? Yeah. Um, the being able to be, disgusting yeah, okay. <laughs> and and like a big asshole is yeah. so liberating it's not usually what i play <laughs> yeah. so um not be not having to be like the perfect you know perfect hair and makeup and little starlet um is is great it's just such a freedom to be ugly <laughs> yeah yeah that, that sounds like a t-shirt uh here we go <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, and again, I want to, uh, another thing with these interviews I love to do is, uh, the whole aspect of your career. I mean, I, I, I knew about you from watching that was phenomenal. I highly, highly recommend everybody check out the cleansing hour. Actually, uh, Damien's talking about coming on the show in the next couple weeks. 
Uh, so super look forward to talking to him. Uh, but you're also in uh, Magnificent Seven. Uh, this more recently came out as well, uh, a country uh, romance. Do take on these different roles. Like, what, what do you look for in a role? I, I mean, outside of obviously just acting or whatnot. Like, do you look for uh, di like this in particular was like you said was different doing the cleansing hours. It's okay to be ugly in this one. I can, I can go crazy with this. Uh, what do you in particular look for a role? What inspires you? Yeah, I mean, these are all such different uh, things. Uh, well, uh, often it's about who I'm working with. Mm. You know, obviously, in Magnificent Seven, it was like working with legends. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? How can you pass that up? That was an incredible experience. And actually, I credit that experience to uh, curing a lot of my imposter syndrome um, because it was such a inclusive and collaborative experience, even though my part was small and it, I was uh, opposite, you know, stars. Yeah. Um, and to be included by Antoine Fuqua um, yeah. in like, he, you know, would have one-on-one -on -one conversations with me about my character and like about what my storyline was and like, what do you think? And I'm like, wow, wow. Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and like, that was, incredible for my feeling of belonging um, and and then you know the a country romance working with jonathan bennett yeah. i'd heard that he's so great and he was he didn't disappoint he's so great <laughs> um just like a joy to be around um and of course those kind of films actually so that was the first film greenlit by sag post quarantine oh, we filmed it in, yeah we filmed it in may of 2020 Wow. And, and so it was right before SAG came out with all the like strict rules. Um, okay. We were very careful and, uh, you know, cautious and everybody's tested and it was took place mostly outside in a remote area of Oklahoma. So it was very safe, but, um, but we kind of slipped under the wire. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Anyway, but, um, but yeah, those kind of films, I had gotten several messages before I filmed that. Of, of another movie that I filmed, um, uh, what, what's my other movie? <laughs> Love's Last Resort. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, oh, this has helped me get through quarantine. Just like, this is so such a lovely, like, uh, film that doesn't cause stress and, you know, yes. thank you for helping me through. And, and I was like, wow, that alone is reason enough to do these kind of films and honestly yeah. they're just a pleasure to do like they're it's not stressful it's not um yeah. not covered in blood yeah. um <laughs> you know pros and cons don't want to get typecast in that let's put it that way <laughs> pros and cons um <laughs> they both have their their um you know pleasures and and their drawbacks um the pleasures yeah. of of a country romance was being with uh, the locals in Oklahoma who were, they had their little vineyard and it was just like spending a month on a vineyard. Yeah, I mean, come on. Come on. It's me. And, and wow, do we need that, by the way, like all the, the chaos, the drama from the pandemic and, and, and then some. Uh, so yeah, we, again, appreciate the work that you do on that. And uh, there's another side of the, of, of what you do as well. I always thought it was interesting. Uh, some people just may not think with this, but that is, ADR, which is pretty much just art by itself, automated dialogue replacement. Um, I don't know, like it's one thing to be there in front of people and acting. How do you how do you kind of get in the zone for something like that? Because I don't know, it seems um it could be almost superficial, you know? Oh yeah, it is um challenging to put yourself back uh in a mindset, not only because usually it's months later, <laughs> and you're like, yeah. wait, where was I? Um yeah. But because, yeah, you're literally in, I was in my own closet, um, <laughs> like surrounded by my sweatshirts and uh, and not, you know, on a huge sound stage covered in guts. Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's different. Um, no, but you just have to go back there and imagine it. And um, I mean, voiceover, it's not voice, it's, it's ADR, but it is related to voiceover and I just wanted to just shout out to the voiceover artists because it's a completely different skill oh, and it's, it's amazing. And 
that being said, the um, the actress that voiced uh, a lot of that enhanced the voice of the demon, oh, she yeah. was incredibly talented, um, Tara Karzian, and um, oh, wow. uh, and I was just like so impressed because it is it's you have to like have the thoughts of a character while like saying one line at a time and and yeah. she just is amazing. That's amazing. And that's a little inside scoop there. That's kind of how they made the voice, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, multiple, wow, that's amazing. Uh, the magic of Hollywood, love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, this is the other um, interesting aspect because, you had, like I said in the beginning of this interview, you had your kind of hands in all trades, so to speak, here, and uh, a, di a directorial debut of yours, uh, <laughs> Bearing Amber. Uh, what is that like, that side of things, writing, directing, producing? I mean, obviously you had the acting, but the translation to that, uh, and what was that process like making this one? So I think that my acting background is really an asset to uh, directing because there is a, not necessarily a shorthand because, uh, you know, every actor is different. Um, you have yeah. to sort of figure out the vocabulary between the director and actors each time, but... <sighs> Like I said, I have a lot of tools and I can say, does this work for you? Does this work for you? Right. Um, marrying Amber, obviously that was me. So that was a little different. <laughs> right, right. Um, but um, uh, being able to do, tell a story that was exactly the kind of story that I love to tell, like on my own terms mm -hmm. is so cool. Um, that was like a wonderful experience um, and collaboration with, uh, it was only two, three of us on set. So it was me and my husband who produced it and and our cinematographer on my family farm that I grew up on. Wow, really? Um, so a lot of elements were just like, wow, this is, this is like very fulfilling art making. Um, but then I also, that was a few years ago, I actually had another premiere um, for seancing. I don't yes. know. You, oh, there you go. Um, that was my most recent one. And that was really cool because I wasn't in it. And um, so oh, I yeah, that's right. that outside perspective and and all three of my main actresses were first time, uh, they'd never been in a film before. So it was such an honor. <laughs> and that's I was awesome. like also nervous because I was like, I hope that this experience doesn't like dampen their dreams. <laughs> 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 If they still want to do this afterwards because yeah. it really is a lot of like hurry up and wait and they're right you know <laughs> but at the end they were like well yeah it was a lot of that but i would love to do it again i'm like thank goodness i didn't you know smash dreams <laughs> well that was the other thing you know going going from a bearing amber uh i mean and again we talked earlier about the power of short film and, and developing into feature film and you know, finding your own voice as a storyteller. I always, I'm fascinated with that side of things going from, you know, doing stuff uh, younger and acting uh, classes when you're age 11, working through Tish and so on and so forth uh, to uh, directing, uh, to seancing. What was that journey like for you? When did you start finding your voice? I know it's always a, a it's like a sculpture. You always chisel away at it and you keep working your way. What, yeah. what is that like for you? Um, I think that I, I started realizing that what really spoke to me was my fears, um, uh, that there was a lot of rich, um, stuff there, obviously yeah. a lot of vulnerability and, um, that I really enjoy looking at characters who are pretty normal um mm -hmm. but still have like all of us have intense depth of emotion like that's just a common yeah among us and um, that's the human experience and i i just like to explore that um especially sadness i'm into melancholy yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> um and fear um even amongst people that are just your average people and I just, I like to yeah. acknowledge that that's the truth, that we're all in our own private dramas and it's okay. And we're all okay. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a great, our own private dramas. That's amazing. It, uh, and I always, I think I heard about Robin Williams once. It's like, 
because at one point, he, you know, he, when he won his Oscar uh, for Good Will Hunting or whatnot, and everybody's known as a comedian. And, you know, what comedians have to know the opposite of that to be a good comedian. And even right there, like you just mentioned, that's another great takeaway of we're all in our own personal dramas. And, uh, and maybe, I don't know, maybe that's what helped us relate to d- the different arts and whatnot with uh, you and your sister, your sister with her music, you with your acting, uh, and obviously bring the, the great work that you're bringing. Um, and, and I'm sure along the way, doing all the different productions you've been a part of or even created, uh, you know, you've worked with different professionals. I always like to ask, are there any like uh, gems that you kind of took away that kind of helped you in your career or helped make different choices and things like that? Any, any noteworthy gems, so to speak? There are a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The hard hitting questions now. Is a <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, every time I'm on a set, I learn something. And um, I think one of the things that I, you know, learn over and over is, and this is really good advice for, for actors. Um, yeah. Is to go with your impulses. And that doesn't mean to say, um, do something off the wall just for the sake of it, or, or even set out to do something different. Mm -hmm. But if there is something that occurs to you that is within, you know, your character, (laughs) yeah, do it because it's so yummy and so surprising. And, and that's what the, that fresh and raw quality comes from. And usually in my experience, um, has been a delight. Like the when you call cut, the director's like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because it's like it's the moment speaking to you and saying, "This is this is the connection. That's what's going to get cut through." And um, and so don't don't try to be too consistent to the detriment of those little surprises. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I don't know. Uh, my background, as far as arts goes, is music. Uh, more, you know, I was a traveling musician and things like that. And you know, there's parts and I can you can feel in a song with a crowd. I imagine it's different, right? Uh, being on camera versus being in front of a, an audience doing a play or whatnot. Um, you know, how, what is a, a for you like a, a tip or whatnot? You had to tap into that um, for people because I, I I do see musicians to get that live actors and act you know actresses in the middle of a performance sometimes like you just said you, you you just go with is it just a more of a feeling uh whatnot or is this this muscle you work over a uh, year so to speak oh it's absolutely absolutely a muscle um yeah i mean the more you do it uh the the easier those openings present themselves um but yeah i don't know you just you just know, and often I think that the the thing that is present in like a live music performance or a play, where you really are t- taking um, energy from the audience, and it's so so yeah. delicious. Um, <laughs> I I came from theater, so I I yeah. remember my first love. But yeah. but on a set, I think that it's less about you know noticing the absences of those things. Like, oh, yes, there's not an audience, but but everybody's there. There are a lot of people on a set. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're your scene partner. And, right. and it's, so it's just more compressed, but it's still there. You can still feel the energy and you should open up your body and your heart and your soul to all the energies that are coming to you. And that's that's really a thing about being on set that I've learned is being present. It's not about okay. saying this is fake and there's cameras in my face, there's lights and there's this flag here and low. I like, I'm just going to put that all out of my mind and pretend it's not there. Actually, I don't do that. I, I'm there. And, and okay. also I'm in this moment with my scene partner, but it's all happening and it's all providing energy. So. Wow, that, that's, that's amazing. what works for me. <laughs> that's an amazing, amazing takeaway. Uh, kind of uh, final qu- closing here. Uh, you know, this part of show I like to ask: future goals, like w- more uh, directing, more writing, uh, projects, and 
role types of roles you like to take on things like that. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, I, right now I am so into the, uh, path of, of directing, um, writing, directing. I have a couple of scripts, um, that I'm trying to pitch out now, um, including, uh, possibly a feature version of seancing. Oh, um, awesome. yeah, I really love working with, uh, that age. Um, I think it's such a rich moment in people's lives. Oh, um, yeah. and, um, but yeah, I will never not want to be an actress on set. It is the best job in the world. So, yeah. so both all I'm greedy. I want it. <laughs> I want to make art in all these ways. Love that. I love that. I'm going to put this up for everybody. Uh, you guys check out all her social media here. She's on IMDb. Uh, definitely go check out her work. Amazing, amazing work. Like I said, right away when I watched uh, uh, The Cleansing Hour, I was just like, hey, uh, I, I got to reach out to this person and talk to her. Amazing performance. And it gave me down this rabbit hole of all your, your other amazing work. Yeah, Alex, thank you so much for taking time to be on the show. Really appreciate you're it. You're so welcome. And you're such a great interviewer. Oh, I, this is awesome. Hey!